Let me ask you a question. How's your heart health? If you're like many people, you may not actually know. My name is Dominique. I hold my Master of Science in Nutrition, Science, and Policy, and I'm here to talk to you today about cardiovascular health and its link to longevity. There are some pretty serious um, potential risks when we have poor heart health. That means increased inflammation and increased cardiovascular events like stroke or heart attack. Now, according to the CDC, about 80% of cardiovascular disease is actually preventable. So that means we need to be aware of certain biomarkers in our bodies that tell us about our health, that kind of indicate what's going on inside. Things like cholesterol, total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, triglycerides, and inflammation markers like high sensitivity C-reactive protein. The Inside Tracker Heart Health Goal is specifically designed to give you personalized, relevant recommendations that will help optimize the biomarkers that are associated with strong heart health. Our hearts are the muscle that keep our bodies going. So heart health is really paramount when we're trying to optimize our overall health. There are a few things that you can do to keep your heart health in good shape. Um, that means increasing the fiber in your diet, having a diet full of fiber. Um, you can get fiber through whole grains, beans, oats, and um, also limiting saturated fats is really important. Also incorporating antioxidant rich foods like fruit and vegetables help to reduce the risk of LDL cholesterol being oxidized. That's going to help prevent poor heart health. And avoid long periods of sedentary activity. Research has shown that long periods of sitting and non-activity are associated with cardiovascular disease so even a five minute walk every hour will really help to make your heart healthy this means that if you take the right actions and are proactive you can reduce your risk for having poor heart health Cholesterol actually plays a very important role in our bodies in a number of ways, including creating cell membranes for our cells, helping to produce hormones and vitamins, very important things and necessary things that we need. But having levels that are too high are really not good because these particles will become are more likely to become oxidized. And oxidation creates free radicals, which are very unstable molecules in the body that essentially cause chaos. And in this case, what I mean by chaos is plaque formations, which will attach to the artery walls, narrowing blood flow through your arteries. And that creates the risk for poor heart health. Again, those cardiovascular events that you want to avoid. So there are different types of cholesterol in the body. HDL is typically considered your good cholesterol. This is high density lipoprotein, and it's actually a protein carrier that attaches itself to cholesterol um, and transports it throughout the body. HDL is typically considered the good cholesterol because it prevents um, oxidation effects that happen with LDL cholesterol. LDL cholesterol is low density lipoprotein. It's typically considered the bad cholesterol. Um, and the reason for that is when LDL levels are high, uh, you're more likely to have oxidation happen to those particles and oxidation causes pretty bad things to happen with your heart health. Wanna improve your cholesterol levels? We have some simple tips to help you get started. Luckily, there are a bunch of things that you can do to ensure good heart health. Um, that means including foods that are antioxidants into your diet. Antioxidants protect against oxidation of these cholesterol particles. Um, so you're going to want to look for foods like dark leafy greens, citrus fruits, um, bell peppers, nuts, um, and even a little bit of dark chocolate um, or red wine in moderation will do the trick. 
And high fiber foods are another important food to include. Fiber carries cholesterol out of the body, kind of clears the body of that cholesterol excess. Um, so things like whole grains or oats are really good sources of fiber. It's also important to include foods that have good sources of good fats. So by good fats, I mean monounsaturated fatty acid that is found in things like olive oil or avocado um, and foods that are high in polyunsaturated fatty acids like oily fish like salmon um, or flaxseed, walnuts, things like that. Now, if you're unfamiliar with where you stand with your cholesterol biomarkers, Inside Tracker can help you out. Take a look at our plans. Um, and one of the best things that I love about Inside Tracker is that you can actually track trends over time, which means you can see the impact of the lifestyle changes that you've made over time, what works and what doesn't for you. The proof is in the data. Do you have chronically high inflammation levels? If so, it may be affecting your heart health. When excess LDL is present in your blood, this can cause an inflammatory response by the body. That means the body is sending white blood cells to the area to protect it, um, but there are other materials that are also being sent there like blood clotting materials and fat substances. And this accumulation of all of these different things can cause plaques in your arteries. More plaque in your arteries results in atherosclerosis, which is a hardening of the arteries. And that results in further inflammation responses, creating that chronic inflammation. So while inflammation is typically a beneficial response for our body, protecting us against foreign substances, high levels of cholesterol can cause chronic inflammation and chronic inflammation is where we start to get into trouble with heart health. It's common for patients who have experienced cardiovascular events like um, stroke or heart attack to have high levels of inflammation. So it's important to understand the biomarkers that relate to inflammation in order to understand your heart health and your risk for poor heart health. One inflammation related biomarker that's particularly interesting to look at is high sensitivity C-reactive protein or HSCRP. There are a few general tips that you can take to reduce your inflammation, um, and those are primarily dietary and nutrition related. Um, you want to avoid foods that are high in kind of the unhealthy fats. That means like saturated fatty acids, um, like what's found in red meat or coconut or palm oils. Um, you also want to avoid too much salt, sugar, or too many calories overall. And there are some foods that actually help decrease inflammation. Those are things like olive oil, nuts, seeds, and grapes. Supplements may be another good option for those with high inflammation. Supplements like probiotics, vitamin C, or hesperidin. So the first step to understanding how your inflammation is within your own body would be to get a blood test done like that of a test with Inside Tracker. Once you know what is happening within your body, you can take actions to improve it. Did you know that stress can affect heart health? Here are a few tips to help keep your stress levels in check for a healthy heart. Cortisol is known as the stress hormone, and under normal circumstances, it does a lot of helpful things in our bodies like regulating blood pressure, metabolism, and suppressing the immune system response when that's needed. But when cortisol is high, when stress is high, um, lasts a long time, aka chronic stress, this can result in high blood pressure, a weakened immune system, and the development of heart disease. So what are some ways to reduce cortisol and manage your stress levels? Exercise is always a good one. Um, incorporating whole foods into your diet, going to sleep at a regular time and for consistent periods of time, also practicing yoga and meditation techniques, and even reducing or limiting your alcohol and caffeine intake. 
Now, the best way to manage your cortisol and stress levels is to get a blood test done like that with Inside Tracker. You will be able to understand where you fall, what your baseline cortisol is. Um, and Inside Tracker actually gives you personalized recommendations that are relevant to you and your lifestyle to help you manage these levels and bring them actually into an optimal range for you. Do you have a healthy resting heart rate? Let's talk about what a healthy heart rate is, what factors influence it, and how you can improve yours. According to the American Heart Association, a normal resting heart rate falls between about 60 and 100 beats per minute. However, many studies are indicative that about 90 beats per minute is the high end of what is considered normal. A lower resting heart rate tends to be more favorable because it means that your heart is working less hard and is exerting less energy in moving blood throughout your body. There are a number of different factors that influence your heart rate, including age, so the older you are, the more likely your resting heart rate is higher, um, sex, males tend to have lower resting heart rates than women. But there are other factors that you can change to impact your resting heart rate, like food choices, incorporating healthy fats, which has been shown to reduce resting heart rate, physical activity. As your fitness level increases, your resting heart rate tends to decrease. Hydration status can also impact it. If you are dehydrated, your resting heart rate will be higher because your heart is working harder. Even consuming alcohol, alcohol consumption has been associated with higher resting heart rate. So how can you improve resting heart rate if you're not within the range that you want to be? You can incorporate aerobic exercise. This is one of the most modifiable factors that you can change to impact resting heart rate. You can also cut back on alcohol consumption, stay hydrated, make sure you're getting good quality and quantity of sleep, um, or practice some meditation and yoga technique. So how do you know what your resting heart rate is? Well, a lot of activity trackers will track this metric for you. And what's really cool about Inside Tracker in particular is that you can track this metric over time and you'll also receive science back recommendations from the algorithm that will tell you how to improve.